In this video, we're gonna be talking about cost of production. Everything that goes into producing a product for a firm that a firm has to consider in order to make production decisions. How much should a firm make that is going to make them the most profit? So there's one basic question that they really have to be working and that's part of the labor. And that's how many workers should be hired. The amount of workers that you hired can make or break a production line. So you gotta look at how it's going to affect output and it's making sure that the revenue is going to help their output make profit. So when business owners are basically thinking about how many workers do they need to hire that is going to maximize their production, they need to think about a marginal product of labor. How many workers are gonna be efficient? How many workers are going to be the best formula to produce their product and to make sure their costs are low? So when we think about the margin, and remember this word is so important, we've talked about it a couple times, that word is going to be reoccurring. So here's an example of a table in which we're going to look at the marginal product of labor for workers in a beanbag factory. So first of all, when you have zero workers, of course you're producing zero beanbags, but you hire one person. That one person can now produce four beanbags in an hour. Well, the difference between four and zero is four. You're basically just subtracting and that equals up. You add two. Well, now this second worker can produce 10 beanbags per hour, and it goes on and on. You're basically going to look at what is the space between one worker adding one more worker. When you add a fourth worker, that fourth worker, if you subtract 17, you take 23, which is the total for four, and you subtract the amount of beanbags, 17, which was the total beanbags that three workers produced, that equals six. And that tells you that fourth worker added six additional beanbags to the production. So when we basically look at the efficiency of this, we want to see an increase in the marginal product of layer. That additional worker is beneficial. They're actually increasing the amount of work that they all do in the total production. But if you notice the difference between three workers and four workers, that fourth worker did not cause an increase. Now you see a decrease in the amount of efficiency. So when we think, well, what is the good number? Three, because that is when it stopped increasing the marginal product of labor. The third additional worker increased it, but the fourth started to see a decrease. So then the worst is when they hired the eighth worker and now the difference in the per total production per hour made a negative marginal labor, right? So we never wanna see that. And a important thing of a firm is to make sure that they are monitoring the marginal part of labor to ma maximize the efficiency of their workers. So we think then the efficiency of workers and the best scenario for a firm, we have to think about what's the returns of their investment. And so we wanna look at what is gonna be an increasing marginal returns and that means that the March production levels are going to be beneficial for the new investment. And what we see here is when we look at those numbers in the beanbags per hour, we saw an increase for the first three workers. Every additional worker had a marginal product of labor that was greater than what the worker before them supplied. One thing that can really assist this is specialization. Everybody's got their job in a production line. Ford Motors was in making the Model T, I mean, he didn't invent the car, but he basically streamlined the production line with specialization. So it helps to increase the output per worker because there's no confusion. There's no um, basically kind of anyone like laying around doing nothing and there's no sharing of resources. They all have what they need to do that one job. So if there is specialization, there's increasing output per worker. And so as we saw with the additional uh, of the fourth worker onward to the seventh worker, we saw that the, the numbers were decreasing in the marginal product of labor. Each additional, additional worker was actually decreasing the margin. And this can happen when you're hiring additional workers, your output is still increasing, but just not at the same rate. And so they're less marginally than before. And this could be because of different things. For instance, they don't have enough capital or enough resources. So for instance, if you had one person at the cutting station, but you only had one pair of scissors, well, what was the other person even doing at the cutting station? Or if you only had one little stuffer machine, I don't know what they do. It's the Build-A-Bear factory, they use a stuffing machine, right? Um, you would need to make it more efficient, make sure you also extend your capital 
to provide the resources to every worker like a Henry Ford production line. So making sure that all workers have what they need to specialize and to continue the production going smoothly. And then there's the worst of all, and that is the negative. We saw in the eighth worker and ninth worker that each additional worker was producing so little that it actually decreases where then your official output number is actually not even going up at all because it is such a waste of resources to have those additional workers that you're decreasing, that they're actually hindering even an increase in production. That's your friend Bob at work that puts his dirty feet up on the desk and thrice, tries to throw things at you when you're trying to work and basically causes you to just scream in frustration and can't concentrate at all. So you're even doing a worse job than you did before he got there. That's not, not actually from personal experience or anything. So negative deep marginal returns is very bad. 